Hey everybody, quick intro. Today's video, I picked out about 10 items that sold over the month of June for me that I thought were interesting, unique, maybe something that could inspire you to think of different things you can sell online to help boost your overall sales numbers. In fact, I want to go ahead and share my sales numbers with you for June, just so you always have a clear picture of the kind of reseller that I am and what I do what I do. So between both my eBay stores, I did a total gross amount in sales of $4,811, making it my second best month of the year next to March. It was 163 sales total, and that makes the average item sale price break down to $29.50. I'm rounding down a little bit there. And that actually makes me very happy because I've been trying to get my average item price up from last year. Uh, just a couple interesting notes. I only had two returns for a total of $81. Um, that might be a little bit off because I think I may have had a couple of things I dealt with via PayPal. So let's just even double that and say it was 160. Not a big deal. Um, and the interesting thing of that $4,800 in sales, only five items I sold sold for $100 or more. I guesstimate I put about 20 hours a week into resale. So it breaks down to about $55 an hour for each hour I worked. I thought that was just a little silly statistic to throw in there. Let's jump right in here. This was one of the more recent sales towards the end of the month and one of the few that came in over $100. This is a Hello Kitty and Dear Daniel. I guess Dear Daniel is the male counterpart to Hello Kitty. I didn't even have any knowledge of that prior to this. Uh, this is a Red Wedding album. It's actually, it has Japanese writing in it or it is from Japan. Either way, I'll try and show you some of the pictures here. It's got like a really cool cover, um, like embroidered, it had some uh, fuzziness to it, and it had pages with Japanese writing in it. I did study Japanese for a very brief period of time, not long enough to tell you anything about what it says. But I uh, found this for $12.99, and there was a sticker on the back of the box originally for $232, which I think was just from one of those uh, import stores that you'll see around town that gets uh, items from Japan or from Tokyo and uh, marks them up for sale over here. So there were no comps in the store that I could see. Obviously, it's a very unique item. And I did see one other Hello Kitty wedding album being asked for about $80 on eBay. I ended up just buying this and putting it up for $120 with free shipping. And it sold in about a week. So first one I've ever come across like this. Hello Kitty is obviously a good seller but was a little bit surprised to see how fast this sold for. And uh, maybe I could have got a little bit more, who knows? Next up is another one of the items that went for over $100. And this kind of has a cool, uh, just this is why I take shots on things. Found this for $6, I could find nothing whatsoever as far as comps. This is, I'll try to get the picture up here. This is like a little miniature buggy remote control thing. It's got a case and it's a jump ramp and some cones and stuff that came with this like starter kit. I did see the little race cars themselves selling for between $30 and $40 a piece used. Okay, did you see that? Because I just noticed that. Well, there was a rookie mistake and I guess it wasn't a problem because the item's already been delivered with uh, positive feedback. There's a Google sticker still on the box that I left there. Wow. Okay, yeah, so see, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing this, and I talk about this in other videos, be okay with making mistakes because they're gonna happen. Uh, but yeah, guys, use this as a lesson. Always, always double and triple check that there are no stickers on the box. I don't know how I didn't catch that even when I shipped it. And I'm starting to wonder if I actually used an old picture rather than the correct one. So I'm hoping that was not on the box when I actually ship it to the customer. Uh, anyway, just wanted to point that out. I'll call myself on a mistake when I do it. So I just said, you know, I'm gonna put this up for like 150 bucks. It is a Toys R Us product. It is brand new, even though the box was pretty banged up. And I put it up for 150, it took a little bit and started getting some offers. And I finally sold on $135 with somebody. So not bad for a $6 pickup. It just goes to show you not having comps might mean you actually have something rare and desirable. So Micro Terrain Titans and the brand is Spin Maker. In case you come across anything like these little remote control cars. I had a good rush of finding some unique board games. Just throwing this one in because these are the kind of 
not off-brand, but kind of not common board games I keep an eye out for that seem to sell really good. This is one from Z-Man Games called, I thought it was Camel Cup. It's actually Camel Up. It's like a camel racing game. The box was open, but as you can see in the pictures, uh, all the pieces were new and sealed and unused, unpunched. And there were some comps I looked up in the store that were around 60 to 70 bucks. So I bought this for $6 and took about two weeks and sold for a total of $70 plus $12 for shipping. So, you know, just because you see off brand board games or weird things, uh, those are the ones that I look for, especially when they're strategy games. Maybe there were games on Kickstarter that are hard to find. It's got a barcode, scan it, type in a name, take a look, make sure you're looking at the sold, see what the common selling price is and when the last time something sold so you know if it's a good find or not. You know my channel, I gotta throw in at least one remote control. Uh, this is why I check all remote controls out, although as you do it for many years like me, you tend to know which ones to check and which ones not. This was clearly a Toshiba DVD recorder as evidenced by the record button on here. So as long as these have clean battery backs, uh, they aren't chewed up by dogs or babies, then I grab them. And DVD record remote controls go for really good money. I don't have the information in front of me. I probably didn't pay more than $5 for this, and it didn't take very long to sell for $40.45. Came across these chalk sets. I do a lot of stuff with crafts. You're actually gonna see three craft items here. Uh, these are like a chalk set. Did a little bit of research in the store to figure out exactly what they were, if there was any value, and I did see lots of them going for decent money. So I paid $1.99 a piece for these, just decided to put all three together. They weren't brand new and sealed, but they were not used. So I went ahead, got $40 for that out the door total, $35 plus $5 for shipping. Only took about uh, 12 days to sell and very easy to ship. They were light enough to go first class in a padded envelope. These are those little paintable crafts you're always gonna come across in a Michaels or Joann's, especially around Christmas time. The brand for these was Wee Crafts. Now, I didn't know really, they were just in loose bags. Um, you can see this one kind of had part of the original packaging on it. It had the painting guide. These were new and seal. I didn't see anything chipped or broken. Uh, just like these ones here too. These were all loose in the bag, these gingerbread minis but it was a complete set. I didn't know at the time it was a complete set, but I only paid $2 a bag for these and I actually got four different bags. So I just said, let's see if somebody's feeling crafty and getting ready for Christmas. I ended up listing both of these for $35 with free shipping and $35 each, obviously. And one person bought both maybe about two days later. So for a total of $70 with free shipping. And again, I paid $2 a piece. So that was a very quick flip of turning $4 into 70. And you gotta look, this is a time for crafts. People are still home. People are looking for things to do. And believe it or not, in our scheme of things, the holidays are coming right around the corner. So uh, we're gonna have Christmas stuff in stores in just about two months. So people are getting a jump, uh, a head start on that. I didn't get a chance to show in an older video because I've been on hiatus for a little bit. But I found three Harry Potter ornaments, including a couple of very rare ones. This one was there as well that actually had damage on it. I think I took a picture. You can see here the light is broken off on this and there is a little bit of damage on the top of the dragon. You can see one of the spikes there is, is missing from his back. So I paid 99 cents for this, just for what the heck. It's Harry Potter. Normally these sell for like 50, 60 bucks. Maybe somebody wants it for their tree regardless. And yeah, $25 it sold for relatively quickly uh, with $3.95 for shipping. Was out of the box, just a loose item. And yeah, somebody wanted it for their Christmas slash Harry Potter collection. I'll jump over really quick and show you two. Here are the other two. They're still listed. I know I could flip this one if I dropped the price a little bit more, but I'm waiting. Uh, this is a 2013 Hallmark uh, musical ornament of Hogwarts Castle or Hol Hogwarts School, forgive me. Uh, the going price is around 230 to 270 if it's brand new in the box. This was just sitting there loose on a shelf. I think I paid $1.99 for this one. And uh, I have a number of watchers on it. I'm just waiting. I'll probably drop the price down in a little while and see. But if I can get max value now, I like to leave Christmas stuff up all through 
uh, the year. And if somebody buys it, they buy it before the rush starts and people start lowering their prices on Christmas stuff because they want to move it before the season ends. Uh, I'd rather have it listed all year long and try and get max value for it. So, but that was an incredible find. So for a $2 bill. And also this one here too, this is the 2010 Harry Potter and Dumbledore ornament. It's damaged because there is supposed to be a blue bowl here on the ornament. And as you can see, there is no blue bowl. Uh, and still bought it. I think I paid another $2 for this one. I have six watchers on it. This is the kind of thing, again, this will probably sell for an easy $30 if I lowered the price, but I'm gonna wait a little bit longer, but it's gonna sell for sure. So here's just more of the random stuff that I sell that keeps the machine churning and keeps the money coming back into my bank account. This was a 99 cent purchase, flipped really quick. A uh, little action figure from, was this Thomas the Tank Engine? No, this was Chugging Tin Wooden Railway, uh, talking figure in pretty decent shape. You can see it's got a little bit, try and zoom back in there again. It's got a little bit of damage towards the back of the vehicle, but the batteries in there were still good. Box had a bit of damage, but again, this was 99 cents. I did see comps of other models, other figures, other characters from this selling for about 25 to 40. So I just picked it up for 99 cents. And those little toys, those little action figures, those are great things that you can find at yard sales, at thrift stores. And a lot of the brands are still popular. WWE figures, video game figures, which we're gonna see in a second. Thomas the Tank Engine, all that kind of stuff. And forgive the funkiness of this shot, I just wanted to clip this out from the sales history. Uh, not big sales by any means. These are Halo 3 action figures. Uh, I talked about these quite some time ago. One of the last purchases I made back in March before everything shut down was about uh, 10 bags of Halo and Gears of War action figures. And they've been selling like mad. In fact, we'll look in a second and see how much I made total so far from them. But uh, you know, those little bags of action figures, take a look, you never know. Um, obviously it helps if you're familiar with these brands and these characters. I'm a video game nut, so it was easy for me to spot these, but you take a look, you never know. When you buy them in bulk bags for two, three, four dollars, your cost per item is very low. So somebody bought two of them as a bundle. These were two of the lesser figures, uh, you know, for a grand total of $34 and uh, 84 cents. And let's hop over really quick and take a look and see how I did on these Halo figures overall so far. So here's a quick look at the sales on the Halo figures since March. Uh, you can see from my numbers down here, I've sold 35 of them so far. My overall cost to uh, acquire all of them, or basically, you know, cost per unit, uh, came to $36.96. There's all my fees, but you can see I've had uh, net sales of $237.15. That's the profit. Took a little bit of work to list them, but uh, you know, something like this is so easy to ship and sell. And I'm just noticing for some reason, this one's showing I lost $8, which uh, is probably a typo on my part somewhere in my database. So probably even a little bit higher, maybe closer to uh, $245 I made so far. I hope you guys are able to get something out of that. Some little item that might give you uh, some inspiration to keep your eyes peeled for the same thing, something similar in the future. Working on a few new videos, hopefully get them out soon. Uh, I know it's been a while, but things have been crazy. So hope you guys are all doing well. Until I talk to you next time, stay tuned, stay positive, and keep hustling. Take care.